see what I'm doing a little better. This works or not? Yeah, I'm good. All right. So, as I mentioned, my name is Ben Payne, and I'm a physics graduate student. I graduated in May. I just made my dissertation about, uh, let's see, maybe a week or two ago, and that was after a lot of uh, adversarial uh, competition with the uh, Office of Graduate Studies. Alright, if anyone has any questions at any time, I can see all of you, so please raise your hand and uh, ask me a question. And then, what, what I'm going to be talking about is something that maybe not everyone has experience with. So how many people here have used LaTeX before, have at least maybe investigated? we have got one here. Anyone else? A few more? Alright. And how many people here use Word? Microsoft Word? Alright, so a majority of you. So I'm going to be operating from the basis. Uh, just on that, that ratio there that you're an experienced word user, maybe you're, you, you've heard of LaTeX, but you're not familiar with what it is and what it can do, what it's useful for. The reason I'm interested in it is because in physics, we use a lot of math equations, and if you've used Word, you may be familiar with how tricky it is to get LaTeX, the math equations to look good. And so I'm here to tell you LaTeX is the solution to all of your problems. Uh, it takes a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that next. So, just a little brief. I'm not sure why that's there. Right. So Microsoft Word, you're all familiar with Bill Gates, big famous rich guy. Uh, the way that he builds software is by buying small companies and they provide the ideas. So that's these two software developers here are the people who actually wrote Microsoft Word back in the early 80s. And this is what you're using now as a derivative of that software basically. Uh, LaTeX, in contrast, developed by Donald Knuth. Uh, he's a computer science professor, I think at Stanford, uh, back in 1978. So both the same timeline. The reason there is, you got these computers, you've got word processing, let's put them together and do something magical. And then Leslie Lamport was a major innovator with LaTeX, which is kind of a modification. But the important thing is, the reason this guy wrote it is because he was writing a book for computer science. And he was like, wait, there's no good software on, how to, on making a book. So like how to typeset all of my work. And so doing it all by hand is very cumbersome. And so he wrote a software called Tech uh, to, to do this formatting. So this was the, the motivation. The, the difference between Microsoft Word and LaTeX, La, Word is, is somewhat shallower learning curve in that it's called the what you see is what you get editor. So as soon as you start typing, that's what your document looks like. And so for the ease of use purposes, it's very trivial to get started. You just type whatever you want, right? In contrast, LaTeX is what's known as a document markup language. And with that, you have to uh, understand that there's formatting associated with your content, but they're distinct. And so this results in a bit steeper of a learning curve because you have to learn a language associated with the formatting of your document. And so where, where Microsoft has all these buttons, that allows you to do formatting after you put in your content. Uh, LaTeX, you have to usually understand the language of what you're doing. So to me, some ideological differences. The cost, uh, Microsoft Word, even though it appears to you to be free because you're on campus and you're using Microsoft Word, it's already been installed, it's very easy. Uh, but there is a cost and it is proprietary. You can't modify Microsoft Word at, at your will. Whereas LaTeX is free, doesn't cost anything. All the code is open source, and so if you have a problem, you can just look in the code and see what's going on. This is a pretty significant difference, uh, and we'll see how that affects this next one here. So even though Microsoft Word costs money, you can quite often get it free, uh, like at campus here, and that results in it being widely used, even though it's proprietary. Another way that Microsoft keeps you uh, bound to the wheel of Microsoft Word is that they keep changing their format. This isn't some innovation. It's actually a way of keeping you tied into the Microsoft system. Like whatever Word documents you have, you have to keep upgrading them to keep a pace with the current format. So this is intentional on their part. They keep changing the Word styles. And then what this results in is your inability to recover old Word documents. So I don't know if has anyone worked here in IT and had to recover really old Word documents? Yeah, but it's a really pain in the neck. 
In contrast, uh, LaTeX, it's, it's widely used, but only in science. I've, I've seen it used in mathematics, places where math is, is more important, so physics and chemistry. Uh, and then the, the main selling point for me, at least, is that it's been stable for the past 20 years, right? This is a good indicator that it will be there for the next 20 years, right? If it, if it hasn't had these major, major modifications, then it's unlikely to be modified in the future because it can handle everything. All right, so these are just uh, some, some differences that you might wonder why one is different than the other. What I'm interested in talking about today is how to use LaTeX for your dissertation. So how many people here have actually published papers already in, in journals or conferences? All right, so a, a few of you. And has, just by a show of hands, that a word or? Word. Word, all right. So this is kind of normal in that if you're publishing some sort of abstract or a conference paper and it's just one page, you can do it in, in Word because it's pretty straightforward. Like you just have some margins that you have to worry about. And if you need any trickery, it's not that bad. When, in contrast with your dissertation, mine is about 200 pages. Uh, on average, I've seen it 60 to 120 pages is kind of an average number. And there you're working with a much larger document. And, and there's just, I don't know why this is, but there's more trickery involved in how to get your, your document to look good. And so this is where it becomes difficult in either case. Whether you use Word or LaTeX, I want to emphasize that there's the same level of complexity. In the end, you're going to have some difficulties in either case, no matter what you use. And, and the goal here is to actually make that process smoother. So I went through a very difficult process of getting my dissertation formatted. My goal for you, and I'm going to demonstrate today, is that it should be very easy. There's no reason it should be hard. The reason it's going to be easy is because all you actually want to do with a dissertation is supply content. You don't care about the formatting, right? That should be up to the Office of Graduate Studies. That's not your responsibility, but it turns out they enforce this on you. So I'm going to show today that if you supply uh, your content, like the, the papers you've published, and then feed them into this template uh, that I'm, that's hosted on the Council of Graduate Students website, then uh, it should be pretty easy. In the end, what's going to happen is you're going to produce some sort of document that gets handed into the Office of Graduate Studies. But for their purposes, it could be just a PDF. They don't care whether it's coming from Word or LaTeX, although sometimes they say otherwise. All right, so we're going to jump into uh, our first introduction to LaTeX. And as you can see, if you just wanted to put some sentence here, your text here, this is the content of our, our document, there's a little extra markup. Uh, that's required. And basically this first line here is declaring what type of document it is. In this case it's a report, it's the class type, and then we're, we're declaring the beginning of a document. How many people here know HTML? Anybody? All right, so a few. This is pretty similar to HTML. You're, you're telling what be a web browser how to read your HTML page. Here you're telling LaTeX how to read your document. And it's very similar. So I'm going to have to drop this. So the, the first thing, uh, I'm just going to take this and copy it, this, this content here. I'm going to issue two, and I'm going to put it in a new document, and then issue these two commands. The first, the LaTeX here, on the, operating on the file name, is going to produce some output called a DBI, and then we're going to convert that DBI into a PDF. So it's also a little bit like programming, because you have a language and you have to compile it, and so this is where it's not quite as easy as Word getting started. So this is that steeper learning curve that I was referring to. So the, the editor I'm using today is called Kyle. It's going to come more important later. So I've just pasted in the text from the presentation. I saved my document. And then in my, my terminal over here, I need to compile it. So how many people program? Can anybody write programs? <laughs> Very few, all right. So this, if you get stuck and, and question, like, what the heck is he doing up there? I have no idea. It's unlikely that you're alone, all right? It's, it's more likely that everyone else is just as confused but not as brave, so please raise your hand. So I'm going to go over to the desktop and then the presentation for today and basics. And now I, I, I've just shown what content I have there. I'm going to issue the LaTeX command against this document, all right? And it does this in compiling. And 
then I'm going to just run again to make sure it worked. And then we're going to convert the output. So right, so far, what we've, we've got this tech file, which is what I was editing. But now there's some extra stuff there that was, was the output from LaTeX. I want to add the DBIP up. So now we've got uh, a PDF. And so not too surprisingly, we've got a PDF with your tech here, right? So this is a really good sign. It means we've accomplished our huge step in LaTeX. So in Word, this would be trivial, right? You just open Word, you put in your text, you're done. You print it out, you're happy, right? Here, notice all the steps that we went through. We had to understand the code. We had to put it in these special programs. We had to make all these intermediary files. And so it's a bit of a mess, right? So this is already the first hurdle. And so this is why I think, this is my personal opinion, this is why LaTeX is less widely used. Because there's this huge hurdle. So I'm going to take a shortcut though. All those steps I'm just going to skip them. My editor that I use, the reason I use it is because it has this little button here called Quick Build. It's going to take the same content, I'm going to click on it, and it produces a PDF. It does all those intermediary steps of compiling the document and opening the, the PDF for me. So I'm, I'm going to be lazy today. And from in the future, for all the rest of the demonstrations, I'm going to take this shortcut. But just keep in mind that there's a lot of intermediary steps that are being done uh, in the background. All right. Now, before we get too far, there's one more that I'm going to show you. That one back there that I showed you was four lines long, I think, and it was really short. And that's unusually short, right? No one writes documents that small. It's more, this is a bit of a demonstration of a more common uh, layout. So we've got the same document class report here. We're just specifying the font size. And then it's got all this weird stuff that you're not familiar with. And you're really confused, like why is that there? And you can pick out your set length, top margin. Here you're setting the margins of your document. And then this old familiar begin document. That's what we've got in the end document. And then your text is here. And I've thrown in some math. This is some crazy math here that we'll, we'll see how that renders later on. But the point of this slide is that this header, this is called the header up here, all this stuff, and then this is your content. Your header file very rarely changes from document to document. So even though this looks really complex and messy, messy, it's kind of like a one-time step. So as, when, once you've got kind of your favorite, your personalized header file, you're done. I mean, like you learn it once, you use it for all your documents. There's no point in learning it for every single document. So this is just something I copied in from all of my LaTeX documents. It's, uh, Pretty widespread. So again, I'm going to take this content here just can to show you this. Stuff be included? What was that? Can the cider stuff be included in the separate file somewhere? Yeah, so you, you can take this and spread it across all your documents. You don't have to paste it in every, every single time. Good question. All right, so now I'm going to go back. I'm going to get a new text document. So this is empty here. So I've now got an empty document. I'm going to put the text in there. So I've got what I expect to show up on the page is your text here, that same phrase, and then I've got a comment, so this is just showing off that I can do comments in my text. And I've got some crazy math, which we're going to see how that renders. Yeah, pretty good. So I just put that one button, and now I've got, uh, so now I've got that same your text here, and I've got an equation, which, if you think about it, like doing that in Word, it would be messy, but the important thing here is it's also messy, but it looks good, right? So it, uh, the, the reason LaTeX was built in the first place is to render equations beautifully. That's the kind of secondary intent after getting a captioning program. So this equation here, the reason it looks good is because it's LaTeX. And you can actually, so if you build up experience with LaTeX, you can tell the difference between a Word document and LaTeX just by looking at the equations because they render differently. Can I the point? That's why I use LaTeX. All right, so now this was this is kind of the, the break point here. So this was our introduction to LaTeX. We have some idea of what's going on. There's some, some header files, there's some content, and we're compiling it into a PDF. So does anyone have any questions at this point? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna div divert from here. Any questions? Yeah? Uh, it, so this thing is running in Ubuntu. Do we have a version of it that can run on Windows? Yes, and it's actually easier in Windows. So. <laughs> So what I question was, I'm using a system called in Linux called Ubuntu, specific distribution. And the question was, is all the things I'm showing you here specific to Ubuntu? In the sense of this editor over here, 
where it has this quick build button. That feature is specific to this editor, but there are editors like this in Windows. So in that you click on a button and it produces the PDF. So, uh, and a question that I had earlier before the talk started was, how do I set all this up? Right, so this is a really important question because all I'm showing here today is that you can use LaTeX. That's a distinct question from how do you initialize this, this, the environment. Right? And so what I said earlier was, that's actually a really hard talk. It'd take another hour, right? And so I'm not going to show that today. I'm not going to talk about the differences between Windows, Linux, and LaTeX and all these things because what you're actually interested in, how, how do you set up on your computer? And this one I can't answer because I'm not at your computer. So I won't be covering how to set up LaTeX, but it's an important question. And it's complex, so uh, that's, that's, those are kind of a limitation on my talk because I can't talk about how to set it up for you. Um, all right, so now as I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna change gears here a little bit. Oh, yeah, question. For the previous slide where you showed the equation, do you have to have um, a certain knowledge of writing the equation? Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. This is. So the, the question was, how do I get to this equation? Right? In, in Microsoft Word, there's, I think, the Word Equation Editor, where I can just like click on buttons and get symbols. So that's kind of the approach taking a word all over the place. Here, there's two ways to do it, and there's two ways to do everything you want to do. The first is to know the Any other questions? Is there specific, uh, any specific website which gives all these commands? I mean... Yeah, so, so it, 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 one of the things I... In your editor, for instance, here I'm going to pull open my symbols toolbar. So let's go over this thing as command. Alright, so for instance, most editors in LaTeX, like once you, once you have your LaTeX system set up and you have a nice pretty editor which can do all this type of stuff for you, it's quite common that they will have features like this built in. So I'm going to answer the, the, your actual question a little bit. So for instance, here, I can find the symbol that I'm looking for under Greek, and then it tells me what it is. I can click on it, and it just puts the symbol in. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, the other question about which sites are helpful, there's, I would say, maybe like 10 or 12 good sites, and it would be not, not the time or place to list all of them, but I, I think I'm going to build that into the documentation later on. So there, there are a lot of good sites, and the trick is to just find a good one, uh, find a good 10, 10 of them, actually. All right, so now we're going to change. So if there are any more questions, I'm going to save this. All right, so I'm going to shift gears a little bit. And now that we've seen the basics and fundamentals of LaTeX, what I'm going to show you is how to take uh, uh, an existing scientific paper and incorporate it into the LaTeX uh, dissertation template. So that's going to require two things, a, a paper and a, and a template. So first, I'm going to show you the paper. I don't think there are many physicists here in the audience, but uh, what I'm going to be showing you is from a journal called Physical Review B. That's the intention, that's the intended target for this paper. And if you've read any journal articles, this may look familiar. You've got the title, authors, uh, affiliation, abstract, introduction, and then you've got two column format, right? And there's a lot of stuff, and there's equations, there's all this stuff. There's even this fancy split equation over two columns. So there's some interesting features, and you've got pictures in here, let's see, eventually. So there's some, some pictures embedded in here, and we've got captions, right? This looks like a tough document. If you were to do this in Word, right, it would be as tough as it is in LaTeX, right? The difference is there's a learning curve with both, but whether it's steep or shallow. Uh, so my point here is I've got a scientific paper, I wrote it, right, a few years ago, and now it's dissertation time and I need to incorporate it into my dissertation. How much work is there going to be putting this into my dissertation, right? It's going to require different formatting, different columns, using the same pictures and captions so I make sure I, I don't want to script the content. And I've got all these different headers, like these uh, subsections, like numerical integration results. And I want to make sure that all of that is carried over into my dissertation but in a very distinct style because in the dissertation it's going to be double spaced, single column, huge <coughs> margins, single side paper, and just all these constraints. They're very different from this paper. All right. So now we've got part one, which is a scientific paper, all those ready to go, and I want to throw it into my dissertation. All right. So now we're going to go up to the website for Council of Graduate Students, where 
very helpfully, there's a template posted. So this is on uh, the CGS website for research. And you can just find that page. There's actually two, two templates posted. I'm going to use the one which, which already has some content built in. The reason that there's two posted is one gives just the minimum structure, whereas the other uh, has some content so you can actually see what a dissertation will end up looking like. And you can kind of copy paste your, your stuff into there. So I'm going to take this one here, and I would just download, save link as, and wherever I'm going to throw it. In this case, I'm going to put it over here, this zip file. So, so far I've got the basics, which we've already looked at, the closed channels paper, which is that scientific paper I was talking about, and then we can get rid of this, uh, this presentation, which is done. We'll get rid of basics, we'll just clamp our directory here. So now I've downloaded this zip file. This is what came from the CGS website, all right? So I'm going to extract that. We'll go in there, there's a bunch of stuff. I think there's just one tech, no, there's two, but we'll open that up with our favorite editor, Kyle, and hit compile, all right? So this is gonna take a bit longer because it's a larger document, but not too much longer, I hope. I think this is kind of the status down here. All right, now we've got a dissertation. It happens to be mine, so <laughs> you might see some conspiracy going on here. And so if you haven't seen a dissertation, this is the cover page. And this is the copyright page and the abstract, and then blah, 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 acknowledgments, table of contents, all right. So uh, this looks like a, a, a large document. It's got lots of pages. Each one of these pages, it turns out, is hyperlinked in the PDF, which is kind of a nice feature. I can just hop to it by clicking the link. Did everyone see that? The table of contents has pages, which are hyperlinked. All right, that's nice. And then it's got appendices until I got people blah, blah, blah. All right, so this looks like a document that I could use, and maybe I can throw my my paper into that. So it's got all this stuff, and eventually I want to go in, if we look back at the table of contents, sorry. It's got, I'm going to say, in the introduction, and then another chapter is called One Dimension, and then uh, there's another chapter called this, and and there's these subsections, and so what I want to do is slip in a chapter between three and four. So I'm going to have uh, one more in between here, and my conclusions will turn into five, hopefully. All right, any questions on that? This is just a standard dissertation, not too confusing yet, hopefully. Because now the confusion begins. <laughs> All right, it's not, the point that I'm going to try and make, though, is that it's not that bad. So this is my directory where I've got the dissertation content, and the thing that I care about right now is this dissertation.txt. This is what takes everything and puts it together. I've got a directory over here with some pictures in it. These are pictures that I used in the dissertation. And then in chapters, I've got all those things that you saw before, the abstract, the acknowledgments, uh, the conclusion, these different appendices, uh, my introduction. So all these, these chapters kind of are, are laid out in here. and so. You might already be beginning, to, beginning to guess that I'm going to take my paper and throw it into these directories and then try and compile it. Right? This is as hard as it gets. So, if you have, so what I'm doing right now, this is not really a lot that could. I'm showing you, I've got chapters over here and chapters over here. I just opened in a new tab in my browser, in my, uh, my folder browser. So I'm going to be switching back and forth between these tabs because I've got my closed channels paper that I want to take the contents of and put it into uh, my dissertation. So I'm going to be switching back and forth these. If I go too fast, please tell me. I, I have this really terrible habit of switching back and forth. Be still not being aware. So, all right. This is my evanescent paper. That's the, the scientific paper. I'm going to take that. I'm going to throw it over into the chapters. So I'll put it in here. Now it's just been added to that directory. I'm going to take my pictures that were associated with that scientific paper. There's a lot of them, right? And I have to put those into my pictures directory. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm going to put, this is my dissertation pictures. And I'm just pasting in those pictures from the scientific paper. All right. So I have nothing special yet. And there's some files that I need. This is because my scientific paper is screwed with. You won't always have to do this part. This is these extra files here 
by telling uh, what I just pasted into the dissertation or some files that tells the scientific paper how to be formatted. There's a, a specific to that paper, so. All right, now the last thing I want to see. I've got pictures. I took the chapter, yeah. All right, so I think I've got everything now. So all I did was I took my paper and my pictures, put them in the dissertation. So now we, as you might have to guess, have to edit that dissertation file here. So you'll remember there's a few chapters, the introduction, the 1D, quasi 1D inclusion. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this line and edit that. My paper, the file was called Evanescent. All right, so now